So a common question that I get from prospects and clients all the time when I hop on sales calls is, will Facebook ads or YouTube ads work for my niche? So you're selling a high ticket, you're, you have a high ticket coaching or consulting or agency offer and you're wondering before you run ads, is it gonna work for my niche, right? Now, as someone uh, that's worked with more than 100 clients now, and every single client being in almost a different niche, I'm gonna answer this question. So I'm gonna answer that will it actually work, how to know if it's gonna work, where to check, and how to find competitors to actually verify that it's actually gonna work, and just general some general ideas. So that's what I'm gonna cover in you know no particular order, but in this video. And if you haven't seen yesterday's video, if you're wondering how long it takes to get results, you're gonna to wanna to watch yesterday's. Today's we're gonna to go over um, will it work for your niche, specifically your niche? This question I've been getting for years, so I thought I'd make a video on it because I've <clears throat> literally been asking this question one by one with people <laughs> for like the past five years. So like I said, all of my clients have been in a different niche. So every time I get this question, I'll just say, look, all my clients have been in a different niche. Uh, it really doesn't matter which niche you're in. Like it just doesn't matter. Like literally every client is in a different niche. Like Amazon FBA, e-commerce, accounting, real estate, financial advisors, <coughs> uh, marriage count, marriage counseling, marriage mastery, um, divorcees, so helping divorce people get back. Um, just all kinds, Forex trading, uh, Airbnb, like literally almost every client is in a different niche, like 90%. I have some that like overlap, fitness trainers, right? So I, have, I do have some that overlap, uh, construction people, realtors, so it's all different. Um, but the truth is, if you're running a high ticket funnel, high ticket funnel, high, high ticket coaching, you're taking sales calls, you're running a high ticket funnel, it, it really doesn't matter the nature, but I'm gonna show you how to verify, how to actually check if it's gonna work for you. <clears throat> so the first thing we wanna think about is, are you doing B2B or B2C? Because it's not about if it's gonna work, it's about how to make it work and what to expect and what your strategy should be, right? So whether you're B2B, B2, so B2B is you're selling just to businesses, you're selling to business owners specifically, right? B2C is you're selling to anyone. They're not, they're not business owners, but they could be, but basically anyone, like Amazon FBA is like everyone, right? Or my client that sells to construction business owners, that's B2B, that's just, that's what, what we would call B2B. So the process is still similar, but you should still know which one you're in so that you can determine your TAM, right? Your total addressable market, which I'm pretty sure it stands for, but essentially your market size, like how big is your market? Because because I've, I've taken a lot of B2B clients. I've had one that was in targeting limousine owners. So you might be wondering, that's a very small niche. Did it even work? Yes, it did. And once again, it comes to the strategy, how do you do it, right? So his audience size was very, very, very small. Like <clears throat> we're talking in the thousands, right? A couple of thousand, or like, let's say dentists. I've had clients who target dentists super small audience, um, dentists, those kinds of people. And then when you have B2C, you usually have bigger audiences, right? Much bigger audiences. So you want to know and you want to have all like chiropractors have had clients where we talk chiropractors. So you, and once again, with him, we knew his TAM, which was about 60,000 specifically for his niche. So it's, it's, it's not just any chiropractor, it's a specific type of chiropractor. <clears throat> so you want to be very specific with what and who you're targeting uh, when it comes to Facebook ads and what your results should be. So when it comes to your total addressable market, right? Because there, there can be some some uh, markets where it's just too small. Like recently I was, I was helping a guy out who targets like CEOs um, of uh, specific types of companies like equity, um, big firms like that. Now those are gonna be like running ads to that is just a bit too small. I'm not saying it can't work. I'm talking about Facebook ads as well. It's just a little bit too small. If he's targeting CEOs of equity equity firms, like how many, like once again, we go, you, want, you want to do the calculation. <clears throat> how many of those people are actually like, even exist on this planet? And the thing is, it's, good, it's just good to know how many of those people are in your industry, right? Because those equity people, I mean, I don't know, how, are there a couple of thousand? 10,000 maximum? Like we're talking just America, 10,000, 5,000. So you wanna know exactly how many. And also, where are they usually active? Do they even use Facebook? A CEO of a $10 billion company, like how many of them really are there, right? Like this. So, and is Facebook gonna be the best option? So in that case, you might wanna look at LinkedIn. <clears throat> and you also wanna think about how much is your offer and can you make it profitable? Because 
it, if you can target them, uh, even though it's a super small audience, can you make the economics work? So if you're going to target people like that, and your offer is, your offer is like a thousand dollars, even if you can target them, it doesn't make work. But if your offer is like three hundred thousand or two hundred, two fifty, even if you like reach a thousand people and only one of them is equity uh, person, and you get one of them per week, but out of four you sign one and it's like they buy it for three hundred k then it works and it doesn't matter how much you spend right so also comes down to the actual economics of your offer so that's what i would think about exactly how many of them are there and then you want to ask yourself is is as even the best way to reach them because if there's only like three thousand of your audience or two thousand maybe you should just call email them and cold call them maybe you should just go meet them in person there's like a couple of thousand right so you don't want to be too small the minimum i would say is like ten thousand like five to ten thousand like that's like the bare minimum that's like you're really scraping the barrel there. <laughs> like if you if you're below that, I would just say, just cold email them. Like just build a list, cold email, send letters, and just go to them in person. You can once again, you can run ads. I'm not saying you can't run ads. You, I've done it. You can. Um, you just gotta test it out. You just gotta test it out and take that risk. But ideally, most people's audiences are gonna be bigger than that. Most people, right? This is a rare occasion where the guy's audience is like. CEOs of equity markets and you know big companies like that, but most people are going to be um, half a million, hundred thousand plus, ten thousand plus. Um, so, and it's very funny when I'm getting this call and people. Ask, it's like your audience is big. Like it's you, you know what are you worried about? Are you targeting equity CEOs? Probably not, right? You're you're helping people with a marriage. You're helping financial advisors. You're helping business owners. Whether there's more than thirty million business owners in America, so. Um, the chances of it being your market being too small, right? It's is very very low. And is Facebook ads going to work? That's the second question, right? Is it going to work for my niche, like my special specific? And once again, your niche is not special because chances are someone else is doing it. So, and we can check, right? What uh, other people are doing. So the way you do that is you go to ads library, Facebook ads library, or you just find competitors, and you go to the website, you put, you check their pixel. And then you search up their Facebook page to see if they're running ads. So that's how I would look for competitors. So if I'm, I'm a chiropractor, I'm going to make a list of 20 other chiropractors, specific type of chiropractors that, that, that are similar to me. Look up the website, look up the page, go to Facebook ads. Are they running ads? Um, and then just see from there. Or you can even type in chiropractor and see who comes up in your country. And chances are you will see someone. But even if you don't, that doesn't mean you shouldn't do, you shouldn't be the first, um, but it will give you an idea because then you can see their ads. And if they're running ads and you see they have 200 ads running, that tells you these guys are doing quite well. They're, they're running a lot of ads. They're probably making a lot of money. If they, and you can see when they started the ad, if, it's been, if it started like two years ago, or one year ago, they've been making money for a long time. So that's one way you can quickly check. Right? If you, if you want to see Google ads, you can do the same thing. Just type in their name and see what comes up. But that's how I would be thinking about, does it work? Chances are yes. Like most of the time, of course it works. And I think what people really are asking is they want some confirmation that it's just going to work for me. Like they, it has to be guaranteed. Like that doesn't really matter because what really matters is what we spoke about in the video yesterday, which is your offer. Once again, if we put a thousand people of your market in front of you and they see your offer, do they want to buy your offer? Yes or no? You know, we both we both don't know until we actually do that. This is why you start with organic. If you're getting clients, you check your TAM, and chances are it should be okay if it's above ten thousand, and then you should be able to run ads. So I'll be more worried about can I even get organic clients? Because if you can't get organic clients, just forget about ads. Don't even like we spoke about this yesterday. Just check out that video. I explain exactly what you need to do before you run ads. How to um, I mean, I don't go into too much depth on how to va validate your, your, your offer organically, but you should do that. You should get organic sales or social media for free and just see if it works out. See if you can get some clients. But that's essentially what I would be thinking about um, if it's going to work. Like I said, every client I've worked with is in a different niche. So regardless of what your niche is, just look at the time right, and just think about, um, also think about your economics because the smaller your time, uh, typically, you want to charge a little bit more. And once again, it all comes down to economics. This is why you want to track all of your numbers every single day, 
see how much do I spend? How much does it cost? Because the thing is, all comes down to how much does it cost to acquire a customer? All right, so if your cost to acquire a customer, regardless of your niche, is like $1,000, you need to charge at least $1,000 just to break even. That, 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 that's just a break even point, right? But ideally, you want to be charging four to 5000 uh, minimum to really make a good return, right? So four to 5K. So if you can't do that, if it's too low, you're obviously not going to make money. And once again, that's not even Facebook's fault. You just got to ask yourself, how can I charge more on the back end to make it profitable? So your time might be fine, even though it's low, it might be just fine. Like you're acquiring customers at $1,000 or 500. You just need to have a, the right pricing point to make it work. So this is another thing people don't think about. They just think about, can I, some, some people think about, can I target them? Yes, okay, run, for, keep the price point, whatever I think it's right, and that's it. But really you wanna reverse engineer and ask yourself, um, how much does it cost? How much can I actually charge to make it profitable? And then what premium can I add on top of it? Because I'm giving them a special service or I'm charging on the value. So those are the things you wanna think about instead of just, um, does it work for me? You want to look at the time, look at the economics. Now, economics, you can only get once you spend the money. Once you spend money now, it's to see what, what it really is. So there are some testing costs there. But if you can see other people are spending in your industry, even in, if it's in other countries, um, chances are it should work out for you. And once again, having worked with more than 100 niches, your niche is probably fine. It probably does work. Maybe what you're really about, worried about is your offer. All right, so is your offer actually gonna work for those people? So, yeah, I think that wraps up. I think today's gonna be a short video. So, um, will, it, will ads work? Probably yes. What should you check? You should check, check your time, look at your B2B, B2C, be realistic, right? If you have a small audience, less than 10,000, is ads the best way? Look at your economics, all right? Um, can you make this economically viable? Even if it's small, but if you charge enough, you can. And by the way, I've had a client where we did this because we, we targeted people and this is such a small niche. We target people who wanted to double their Roth IRA, right? Uh, which is a very, very small niche. It's like people above 45 or 50. And our costs were quite high, but we made the most money. Like we made so much money. Like I'm talking 6X cash out. And I want to have a client now we're doing 16X. But back then this was the most I ever hit with a client to the cash ROI. And the only difference with his offer was he just charged like a crazy amount. So this is what I'm talking about, I'm talking from experience. If you front end, even if you, even if you have a small audience, if you can just charge enough, assuming you can you, you can get clients at whatever cost, let's say thousand dollars, two thousand, how much the cost is, if you can just charge enough, you can make it work. With him, he's charging fifteen thousand, twenty five thousand dollars up front. Right, this, this also comes to your sales ability, right? Like how good are your sales? Because maybe these customers can come, but if you, if you have to close on payment plans and you can't charge enough because you're not good, you're not, not because your product is bad, you're just not good at sales. Now, nothing, now this whole thing doesn't work just because you're not good at sales. So, and people, what people do is they'll just blame ads, they'll blame everything except their own sales ability, <laughs> right? Which is kind of ridiculous, but like I said, from this client, we were able to hit sell 25k deals 15k deals left right and center in a very very small niche um another client with the one that targeted i was about to say lamborghinis but it's actually limousines <laughs> we targeted limousine business owners can you when's the last time you've even seen a limousine right <laughs> so it's such a small i think it was four thousand we had four thousand people in this uh, in this audience i remember exactly how much it was and i actually did a a video where we I actually taught him the ad strategy live. If you go back on my channel, you can see the video. And I'm actually, I don't think I said it in that video, but I'll tell you now is, I think I think I did actually, but we, I showed his numbers and you can see his numbers, what we did, everything. And then you can see me coaching him live on getting limousine knows and we were crushing it. And another reason is because his offer was so good. His offer was so good and he stay, stayed with him forever. So even if his cost per, you know, his cost per acquisition was very high. He was able to make so much money in the back end. So that's what you want to think about as well when it comes to ads. And just making more profit in ads. And I think maybe that, that'll be my next video is how to just make more profit for free. And guess, guess what the answer is? Just charge more. Just increase your prices. I had a client once. I took him on. Um, I, I just told him to increase his price. <laughs> literally, literally on the first. I was like, 
And by the way, I don't always do that. That's just, it's not like any clan, I guess. I'm like, just, hey, just increase your price now. This guy specifically, uh, I felt like he was undercharging. <laughs> Uh, because, actually, I'll tell you why. It's because he lowered his price. That's what happened. Ne By the way, never lower your price when you're running ads. Maybe that should be the title of my next video, but so I can really explain all, all the pricing because there's ways to do the pricing properly, but <laughs> never lower your pricing because that's what he did. That's why I told him to put it back and increase it because he, he was making money just fine the last month. He was charging like four grand. And then guess what he does? Um, the next month, because he, he hired me to work with him, and for the few weeks before we started, he was at like three grand or something like that. Like he, he lowered it quite a bit, making less money. I was like, <laughs> and he says, um, we're closing the deals. I told him, why don't you just go back to your price? Like you were literally, like you reduced it for no reason. You're selling the same thing and you just reduced your price. Go back to the same price and probably even charge more. He did that. <laughs> Guess what happened? He just started to make more money. Some some things are so obvious, but the business owner just can't see it. So I had to look through his numbers, look at last month, check out everything, and just tell him, hey, look, we need to put it back, back up to where it was. Right? We don't want to sell the same thing for less money for no reason. Like it doesn't make any sense. Put it back up, made more money. He's happy. I'm happy. Right? And obviously, we did a lot of other things to get him more bookings coming in as well. But that's one of the things we did to grow his business. So <laughs> one thing. Never lower your price. Only increase it, actually. You should only be increasing it. Never lower your price. Um, and actually, I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to make my next video about this too because there's so much information I have to share about pricing when it comes to ads, like how to do installments properly, how much you should do the installments, what kind of ROI you should see, uh, when to, how to increase price, how to actually do this scientifically, right? Because there's a way to increase price without... Um, you know, you don't, you don't just do it for fun. Like you want to actually know for a fact this price is better than this one. So pricing is a big topic, uh, specifically for high ticket coaching and consulting. So I'm going to cover that in the next video probably. Um, but that's all I have for today. Like I said, <laughs> look up on as, uh, figure out, are you B2B, B2C? How much time do you have? How many people are in the audience? Look and look them up on ads library and figure out your economics. That's the big one. Remember your pricing. Uh, figure out your economics, what's your CPA, how much can you charge? If you figure that one out, you you won't have any issues, really, like really, like you won't have any issues if you can figure that one out. That's one of the biggest ones. Even Homozi, I think he's charging like 16,000. And his cost per acquisition is obviously a lot less because he's charging 16K. So think about that, think about it, see where you can charge more, how you can do it. And this is where you got to segment your market down. That's how you can charge more, by the way. Um, but we'll probably do another video as well. So that's two videos. Never lower your pricing. How to segment your market so you can actually increase your price. That's a whole different topic. And there's, there's a scientific way to do that as well that I do with some clients to get that pricing up. Because uh, if, you, if you target everyone, you can't have the highest price. You have to go with niche, super, super niche. The problem gets more specific, more painful. And usually people have more money to fix that problem. It's because you know more about it. You're the only person in that specific niche. And yeah, that's all I have for today. If you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll see you soon.